Good afternoon, Tim Sykes here. Crazy, crazy, crazy morning. Another day with so many spikers. I missed some. I lost some. I made more than I lost. You guys absolutely nailed a lot of the plays that I missed. So let's get into it. Uh, first, I do want to mention, before I forget, we have just two tickets left to the early bird pricing of my upcoming conference in Orlando. Once they are gone, they are gone. My guess is you have probably roughly 24 hours. Um, that's it. 297 for three days, live trading, Orlando, September. Be there. Also, today is the final day uh, for stocks to trade. It was Independence Day week, but we've kept uh, you know, procrastinating, basically, because we keep getting more emails like, you know, no, extend it a few more days. I'm, I want to. I'm just researching. You know, we have the free lessons if you go to stockstotrade.com slash lessons on how to use the software. But trust me, this software is so freaking great and it's only going to get better. We have paper trading uh, coming and multi-broker integration coming and many more features. But right now you can save 35% off the annual subscription. This will end tonight. No more extensions. Uh, also, Got to give props to my students uh, who are tweeting. I love when you guys share tweets with me. Um, it doesn't matter how small or big your gain is or even if you have a loss. The reason why I like sharing this stuff is because it's transparency. And in this industry, it is sadly lacking. Too many people think, oh, you just trade on your own. You don't need to tell anybody. And that's the past. The future is that we can all do better. We can all learn from each other, from our successes and our mistakes. And I know that's a tough concept for selfish, introverted, weird, short sellers, especially because I used to be one, but you need to open up. And it's really beautiful now that Profitly has roughly 100,000 members and we're all sharing our trades. Some of us hold longer than others. Some of us short. Some of us go long. Some of us do better than others. Some of us are just paper trading or learning, but we're at least sharing. And that is what I really want to encourage. So thank you again to everybody who's tweeting at me, especially when you share your screenshots to prove that you're not full of BS. Here's Pete, first day in my chat room, and he did two great trades. You know, very small trades, that's fine. But VII made 30%. Awesome job. And he made another 30 cents a share on DGLY. He sold it a little too soon, as did I on that one. And I miss VII. So Pete, good job, good start. Keep it up. Don't feel like you need to profit every single day. Some days there's not going to be any great trades. But lately there's morning spikes like every single second. Um, here's another one. Um, I got to give him a follow. He just tweeted me this a few minutes ago. Um, and he said, thank you for your work and your humility. Made 170 bucks on DGLY and 33 bucks on MRNS. Small profit, but great attitude. It's okay to start small. I hate these, quote, big traders who make people feel small when they make 30, 50, 100, $200. Listen, I've made millions, but I am grateful for every single dollar. And I think I have a little bit uh, better perspective than most multimillionaires because I trade with such a small account. And I know what a grind it is. Um, you know, my trades today, roughly uh, two grand in profits. I had some small losses on ISNS on the failure. Uh, I banked on PRCH. I got a little too greedy. I'll go over that in a second. And DGLY was probably my best play of the day yet again. DGLY, I, I really just tend to do really well on, um, you know, making roughly 50 cents a share. What is it at now? Did it fade? Yeah. Wow. It faded big time. Um, you know, this one, this one can morning spike. And this was on my watch list last night. Let me just help you understand. Uh, a lot of you guys are asking, how do you find these stocks? Please watch my how to make millions DVD. Please watch my spike ability DVD. Um, and please read my watch list. You know, I don't stay up till midnight, 1, 2 a.m. Eastern sometimes writing these things for the fun of it. I want you to be prepared. So here. I specifically said DGLY, ISNS, and VII are on watch again for more spiking given new police shootings, such a tragic time. Uh, this is for our great country. I'm truly disgusted with some of our citizens' behavior and comments toward our brave police officers, but I try to leave that out of my trading. 
Security stocks should be hot, but be careful. They all have proven they can fade quickly too. I don't think I could have been more dead on with my commentary. And this was last night. It's time stamped. I don't go back and change it. Uh, and look at the people rating it. People have only rated a 3.6 out of 5. Uh, I'm trying to prepare you, okay? So don't say that you weren't ready for these three stocks. And I specifically said they can spike and they can fade. So I don't know what more you want from me. I'm not a fortune teller. I'm not a psychic. I'm just trying to watch stocks that are in play. So when I put something on a watch list like this, I'm watching it. DGLY pre-market, it was trading between 590 and 630. And mind you, this is up big over the previous day on Friday. It closed at 530. So pre-market, it's already up. Pre every single pre-market, I'm looking at hot stocks because they can run especially in this environment, but I don't want to chase. So I was watching it pre-market here, saw, you know, it started trading here around 590, got up to 630. Now you have a nice little range. The range here is 630. The low here is 590. So when the market opens, it's at like 615. So that is mid-range. I don't want to do anything mid-range because I don't know if it's going to go back to 630. I don't know if it's going to go back to the bottom of the range of 590. When it goes down to 590-ish and then holds, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to dip buy. I've done this so many times over the past few weeks. It's worked nearly every single time. Dip buying at the bottom of the range if the range is supported. And you actually had two times to do this. And I would not dip buy it here, even though it looks like it's bouncing a little bit because I'm filming this midday. But near the market open, if it can hold its range, and I'm sorry by the time I even got the alert out, it already started spiking because it held the bottom of the range. And guess what? It got to the top of the range here of the 630s, 640s. I actually had a pretty good exit um, in the 640s, but it got all the way up to 7. Uh, so you didn't have to be, you know, that quick. Uh, but you had multiple opportunities to dip by a hot stock that's in the news at the bottom of its range and sell ideally near the top of its range. You know, this was the top of its range. It came down and then it had another spike too. So you had multiple opportunities. We saw this with TWER last week where you had multiple opportunities to dip by SUNW. You also had multiple dip by opportunities. This one out of those three, uh, well, this and TWER were the most uh, upside, the most volatile. But the biggest play today was VII. I missed it because the spike was too quick. But the same thing, pre-markets is trading in this range of 86 cents. The high here is like a dollar, then it goes to a dollar oh five, and then right here it's at 92 cents. I'm not interested in it because it's mid-range. The low is roughly 85, the high is roughly 105, and it's at 95. That is mid-range, and it started spiking. And you can buy the breakout too. So you don't just have to dip buy. You can also buy breakouts. I want you focused on dip buying if support holds and buying breakouts. This one simply was too quick for me because I was already involved with DGLY. So I missed this one. This was a better breakout right here when it broke this range of 105. And guess what? This was at like 9.33 a.m., right? And by 9.38 a.m., it spiked 40%. And now, granted, it has gone down nicely. So a lot of people are like, oh, you know, this was a bad play. It's not a bad play. You have to focus at the market open. It's actually a good play for longs if you're buying the breakout or if you're shorting the morning spike, which is a Tim Gratani pattern. Um, let me just show you some people uh, who I, I copied from the chat room. Uh, you should be in the chat room, okay? We're all talking about these hot stocks. You can really see what everyone is trading. Uh, this was actually going rogue, uh, made some good money on OPTT. Uh, is this the right one? Did I copy the wrong, the wrong stuff? <laughs> I copied the wrong, the wrong chat. <laughs> Wonderful. I don't even know what's going on. This is from a, a few days ago. I have too many, um, too many documents. Damn it. Hold on one sec. Let me find it. All right. Sorry about that. I had copied. From a, from a previous day, I was like, wait a minute, these moves don't make sense. This is how disorganized I am. I'm just trying to copy and paste from the chat room. But here are some 
uh, examples from the chat room today. Palmer made 320 bucks in one minute and 17 seconds. Nuts. Um, Steve in at 118, out at 140. Ken, this was a great trade. In at 95 cents, out at 142, 1,000 shares. Making 400 bucks in like 10 minutes. Uh, here's another guy in at 95 cents, out at 139. Uh, this is uh, LV426, making 20%. Money Merrick made a nice forty uh, percent. Uh, he's going bowling. I don't know where where Money Merrick is based, but have fun bowling. You know, you just made a nice uh, what is that forty three cents on seven on fifteen hundred shares. So that's like seven hundred bucks. Good job. Uh, order a round of beers for the whole bowling alley. Here's Osiris. Uh, got an EVOK and sold for like fifteen cents. VII made like seven cents. And then sold again and made eight cents. It's okay. Whether you're you're trading scared and timid, that's cool. Or you can try and make the 30, 40 percent. Um, and then we'll get into TRCH in a second. But this is a great morning spike. So my one loss actually came from ISNS, which also had a morning spike, and I was trying to buy it in here in the low threes, thinking that it would retest the three thirties and maybe break out like DGLY did. You know, DGLY had the same kind of cup and handle uh, where, you know, it spiked near the open, came down, and then it had a follow-up spike. And you can see here, I mean, this is an ugly cup and handle, but this is a cup and handle formation. When it breaks the morning spike high right in here at 1020 a.m., it goes from 650 to 7 over the next, uh, what, 20, 30 minutes. And now it's come down, but ISNS, which is, you know, was also in my watch list, at the same time, 1020 is is right here. So the stock is at three, and I'm thinking that it can two come up to 330, 350 maybe. It couldn't do it. It could not do it. And, you know, I had to, to cut losses. I tried to give it time. Um, I even added to my position, which I normally don't do. Normally I, I just exit, but, you know, these stocks are so choppy. I wanted to give it time. I ended up losing a few hundred on ISNS. But the losses on ISNS, and I was wrong. You know, it's okay to be wrong. I lost like five, ten cents a share. Uh, I think it was like seven cents a share. I don't know. It was a small loss when this cup on the handle failed and it became a double top. So if you're ever scared to trade, if a stock doesn't break out to new highs, just get out. Whether it's a small gain or a small loss, it's not the end of the world. What comes in to problem territory is when it doesn't make a new high and you hold and you hope. And, you know, I was in at three-ish. If I'm still holding and hoping now, I'm down 50 cents a share a few hours later. So you cannot hold and hope. If the stock does not make a new high, just get out. And if you're worried about, you know, day trades, I know many of you guys are under the PDT rule. Well, guess what? Don't trade speculative stocks like this. Delayed morning spikes are more speculative. Okay, sometimes they work. As you saw with DGLY, this was a delayed morning spike. It was bigger than the initial morning spike. VII, though, was the, a morning spike, and ISNS was a morning spike. So delayed morning spikes are a little more speculative. So if you're under the PDT rule, I would say, you know what, maybe, maybe don't think about that. Also, PRKR is an example of a morning spike. You can see here from freaking awesome, from 5 to 8. I totally missed this. They, did, um, they won a, a court case against Samsung. Uh, but then it too had a nice little, you know, attempted cup and handle, and it spiked a dollar a share off its lows. But it was much slower and much more gradual, and I was busy with the the better plays. But I want you getting used to, you know, aiming for a very specific point in time. Uh, morning spike right here, attempted delayed morning spike. VII, morning spike right here, and it's had nothing since. ISNS. Morning spike, attempted delayed morning spike. DGLY, morning spike, successful delayed morning spike. This is how you have to think. Oh, and also BLDP, which won another contract. Um, this was a morning spike, and now it's not really a delayed morning spike, but it's a delayed you know, morning uptrend. And this is very nice. So it's not an exact science. You know, You guys want every play to be perfect. That's not how it works. TRCH was my next play. This has already been spiking from roughly, you know, 109 to 120, and it was holding here in the 120s. That's when I bought it because 
This has a history of spiking, if you remember. Uh, was it more than seven days ago? Right here. When it started spiking in here, you know, it had po positive news, obviously, but 70 cents up to a buck 70. And then it came down and then it came up again. So I'm always interested in follow up breakouts. BGI was very similar where it had a big spike right up here from, you know, <laughs> 50 cents up to five bucks. Remember, I was buying it at a buck 20 in here, selling too soon. But it had a nice follow up spike from 190 and it hit. 290 a few times. So this is a nice 50% spike. Even though it doesn't look that great in the overall chart, this is a 50% bounce. Okay? Uh, so don't forget to always watch recent supernovas. So this one, you know, had previously tripled here, and I would have loved to see it go further. I got a little greedy on this one. I bought it in the 120s, and, you know, it went all the way up to 150, and I, I wanted to hold. You know, I don't like getting in and out in 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes. I want to try and give it time. BGI, you know, it went from one to five. Now, obviously, I'm not thinking this is going to go to five, but I do think this could go a little further. And so I got a little greedy, but when it started coming down, I was like, whoa, wait a minute, let me just take profits. Um, and that's what I did, and I made a few hundred on TRCH, nearly a 1,000. Uh, so DGLY, I, I, I did very well um, selling, you know, near the top, on the initial morning spike, underestimating the delayed morning spike. TRCH, I got a little greedy, and I could have I could have made a few hundred more, but you live, you learn. And then ISNS, I cut losses quickly. Um, so those are my three trades today, and that's kind of the range that you'll see uh, with trading, where you know you're, some of the trades you're going to time really well, some of them you're going to uh, sell too late, some of them you're going to have to cut losses. But overall, the goal is that your profits are bigger than your losses. Uh, and, and that's my morning so far. You know, uh, Romeo nailed TRCH, actually uh, did a little better than me. Uh, Major Hitman did well on TRCH. Uh, Hyungo made money on TRCH. Uh, Jay Landon made money a few hundred on TRCH. Uh, here's uh, JD Trader in on VII, made like 25%. Uh, Selvo made 250 on VII. J40 made 400. Uh, get that asset. Got those assets today. Made nearly 1500 on VII. Conference call made 400 on VII, 400 on LC. Back to bed. You East Coasters have it easy. I agree. What did what did LC do today? I didn't even see LC. That's eh, not really as volatile as I like. So, not my kind of play. I am really into these morning spikers right now. TRCH has been very good to me a few times. VII has done well. DGLY, you know, I, I, I'd have to look back really far to see when last time I lost on this one. This one really tends to spike, and I, you know, sold it well, even though I underestimated its delayed morning spike. Uh, those were the plays. Let me also talk about some failed morning spikes, because a lot of you guys, you can't really – just exit yourself from a position. You have to hold and you have to hope. A few people were asking me, you know, NXTD was on my watch list, but I wasn't really interested in this one because frankly, you know, this one has such a history of so many failed spikes. So the more you trade, you'll get more comfortable with certain stocks and their reliability and their patterns. You know, DGLY, if you've been a subscriber of mine for a few months, you know, I've done very well with it. If you've been a subscriber of mine for a few years, you know I've done very well with DGLY. We've seen it, you know, double and triple even uh, in, you know, the next few hours. Uh, and I've underestimated it sometimes, but NXTD really has not had a good track record of holding on to its spikes. So when the morning spike fails, and this actually made a new high. I mean, let me get rid of the after hours on this. Uh, the previous high on Friday was 60 cents, and we got a nice morning spike high. But you got to be selling when this morning spike is failing in here, okay? This is no different than TRCH. TRCH had the spike, and then it failed. And it tried to put up a fight, but when this spike stops, you need to be aware. Wait a minute. These companies are all junk, okay? So if you're going for a morning spike and it's not working out, you get out. Whether you have to cut losses like I did on ISNS, whether 
you know, you underestimate it like I did on DGLY or, you know, on uh, NXTD. I mean, you just have to recognize that it has a huge history of failed, 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 failed spikes. And we all want this big spike again, but it's going to need massive volume and it's going to need better news. It doesn't really have the news to support this. VII, you could say, I mean, is even a failed spike. Even though my whole chat room nailed it because it went up so quickly and you guys were prepared, at least some of you who read my watch list, but it didn't even have a follow-up attempted morning spike. All you got was this. And this isn't that bad to make 50% in a few minutes. Uh, so you have to beware of morning spikes right now. I know that I'm focusing on this one pattern so much, but guess what? This is the main pattern these days. OPTT had no spike. Well, even this one had a little spike today, but from Friday, it had no spike. It opened down because they had bad news after I was Friday. I wasn't even going to touch it, okay? Uh, I'm only interested in big percent gainers. On this one, I was looking for shares to short. I couldn't find any shares to short. No biggie. You know, I would have shorted, my goal was to short a thousand shares here at seven and I would have made, you know, like 500. The risk reward right now does not favor shorting. Okay. Oh, also XNY, which I totally missed. This was uh, a delayed morning spiker. You know, you had the initial morning spike here, uh, you know, at like 10 a.m. And then it just keeps going. What was the news on XNY? I didn't even see. Uh, was it just halts, halts, halts? You have these volatility halts. I don't know. It doesn't even matter. It's just another morning spiker. Same too with MRNS. This is another morning spiker. And on this one, you know, you have to really look at Friday's price action. This is very similar to uh, the big spikes on SPU, which is actually currently halted. But SPU on Friday really started spiking once it took out Thursday's highs. Okay? So look for big percent gainers in their recent previous highs. So SPU really, I mean, it spiked. That was nice. But the big spike came once it took out Thursday's highs. Same thing with KURA, which is coming down. But once it took out Thursday's highs, and I nailed this one on Friday, that's when the big breakout came. OPTT. This was Thursday, and the high was 560. When it broke 560, guess what? That's when it goes to the nines. Today, we have that same lesson with MRNS. Friday's highs were 220. Let me show you today. Because today, look at it. It actually had a morning spike attempt at 220, and then it failed. And I'm sure some short sellers were like, oh, Friday's highs were 220 right here. This is a double top. And then it comes down here to like, you know, okay, double top here at 225. And what does it come down to? Like 210. And then it spikes back up to 260. So if you were a short here trying to pick the double top, you were right for 10 cents a share. And within an hour, you know, you're down 40 cents a share. This is why I'm saying it does not pay to be a short seller right now. Okay, you might be right. You might make some money shorting VII and TRCH. You do. You'll make, you know, 10, 20, 30 cents a share on the way down. But as MRNS proves, if you're wrong, and you don't cut losses quickly, or you get stubborn, as I know many short sellers are, trust me, I used to be primarily a short seller. This is how I know them so well. They are a stubborn, stubborn group of people saying, these are all scams, they should all drop, these are all pump and dump, blah, 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 blah. And guess what? Some of these stocks can really spike much more than their downside. So right now, in this hot market, I'm not saying six months from now or a year from now, if there's a bear market, whatever. Right now, it greatly favors you to buy morning spikes and delayed morning spikes. As MRNS proves on the third time, I wish I had bought this, uh, you know, when it breaks 225 at 10, 10 a.m. and by 10, 30 a.m., it's at 260. This is a very, very nice, you know, 15% run up and short sellers absolutely got destroyed. And, you know, granted, if you can keep adding to your position, a lot of these short sellers think that they're so successful. Well, try trading with a small account, short sellers. I tell you that. 
because a lot of these short sellers are successful because they keep adding to their position, adding, adding, adding. And in this case, they're right. You know, maybe they're, they've gotten back to break even or they make a little money if they keep adding to their short. But if you have a stock like BGI, you know, where the thing just keeps going and you're adding to your short, that's a very, very dangerous game. Uh, an SPU, if you keep adding to your short, it's a very, very dangerous game. OPTT, if you keep adding to your short. Yes, in this one, you know, you would have been rewarded. But you're playing with fire, short sellers, especially in this market. So I'm focused on morning spikes, delayed morning spikes. I'm not going to trade them perfectly. But every day, get in the chat room. At night, please study my How to Make Millions DVD, my uh, Spike Ability DVD. And I just got to remind you, you know, get in on stocks to trade. You can see all of the biggest percent gainers. Uh, using this software, it has over 40 different preset scans that I use. I wish that I could show you in these video lessons, but we have a bug with Stocks to Trade and video recording software that we're trying to fix. It should be fixed in the next few days from what I understand. Uh, but if you go to uh, Stocks to Trade slash Lessons, here is the, uh, the URL right here. Stocks to Trade slash Lessons, and you can see uh, a few different lessons on how to use the software, but I really think it's key. Between my chat room and stocks to trade, you really have no excuse uh, not to be profiting. And if you're not trading yet, at least learning from these morning spikers because we are seeing half a dozen plays every single damn day. And I'm, you know, I'm overwhelmed, and I know a lot of you guys are overwhelmed. It's a good problem to have when there's too many plays. Um, and look at BLDP. This is amazing. I totally, totally miss this. This is, I mean, I'm filming this at 1 p.m. Eastern, and this is hitting highs. So the breakout was right here at 160. It only got to 165, and it comes down to 160 and holds support. I mean, you have 30 cents of upside, but it's such a slow mover. I don't really regret missing it. I just, I bring this up just as an example of yet another pattern that's working right now. It's not just morning spikes or delayed morning spikes, uptrends are possible. Um, but for me, you know, I like the volatility. I like the, the quickness of the morning spikes. And a lot of you guys who, who banked on VII and TRCH and stuff, MRNS, I like this. This was a, a great uh, comment too. I, I have so many more, I can't even keep up. Uh, Tyler, MRNS risk reward was beautiful. Risk four cents off the 198 breakout with 202 entry to make what turned out to be 57 cents. Recognize that this trade will not make me rich, but took the meat of the move and could care less if it continues to uptrend. Next, thanks, Timmy Sykes. Thank you. You know, thank you, Tyler, for getting that. Uh, this is it, guys. You know, never follow anybody's alerts. Never follow picks. Never even want hot stocks or hot picks. You have to go against your degenerative, gambling instincts of just wanting action. I know it's tough, uh, but you have to try and be prepared ahead of time. By the time so many people, you know, there were multiple chat rooms talking about VII here, you know, in the 130s and 140s, that actually turned out to be the top. So you had to be prepared ahead of time. My watch list helps. Watching pre-market action helps, you know, pre-market it was already trading at a dollar. So you could clearly see that it was in play. You don't have to be first. You know, the previous close was, was it 70 cents a share? Yeah, the previous close was 70 cents a share. So at a dollar, it's already up, you know, 50% on the day. But it can go more as this morning spike proves. And I'm kind of glad that I missed it because if I had bought this, you know, I would have been labeled the pumper. I, I would have been the reason you know, theoretically, according to my critics, why this stock goes from 1 to 140. I didn't even trade it, okay? The stock spikes all on its own, and you guys should know that. These stock spikes happen. The volume is massive. I mean, it's trading hundreds of thousands of shares per minute, and you can either take advantage or you don't. No one's forcing you to trade. No one's forcing you to learn, but these morning spikes are happening more and more, and it's just a shame if you don't see that. So I'll see you guys in the chat room. Thanks again.